Welcome to the R&D facility. That's where we're at today. We're in the back, the back room. Cars through there. R&D is in here. Well, I uh, just do refurbing the jack, and um, there's the jack uh, spanner. Different size for Swampy's wheel nuts. So what I've done, welded the end of the spanner on. This jack already had a split in it, so it was damaged anyway. Welded the end of the spanner on there to get us a nice fit for Swampy's wheel nuts. Then we're going to grind this weld off now, chop the end of the spanner off. That gives us a good solid wheel brace. So we're just going to have welded that up. I'm just going to grind that flat now. That'll be powder coated. So that goes with the powder coated jack that's in the post. Say in the post, I've got to pick it up. This will be in black and the, uh, the jack's in blue. So we'll clean this up nice now and that gives us uh, a good spanner. Get them wheel nuts off for when they're needed. Get the grinder out now and we'll grind that down. Alright, so there she is. All smoothed down. There's your nut in the end there, so get that powder coated now. Added a bit of reinforce to the base of the socket as well, because I know they can fail there. So just double measures, uh, strengthen it up a bit more weld, and I'm going to OCD this end. Just shape that, see how it's just a little bit dented. I'll just shape that, uh, well, the uh, hubcap lever. So scoop that down. Okay, uh, wheel brace all cleaned up, smoothed down, and then just cleaned up that end there for the tyre lever, or tyre lever, hubcap lever. So I'll take that away for powder coat now. Nice little bit of OCD there for you. Keep you in the OCD loop. Okay, on to the next job. Let's go. Okay, there's it on the wheel. Working well, fits fine. No problems with that. Great, get it coated. Okay, I've got the mask on because I'm doing wax soiling. Thought I'd show you the setup. Some people were asking. Let's see the bad boy in action. So we've got the 360 tube now and I've fed it through these drain holes in the bottom of this chassis leg. Let's take you up there and have a look, see you going in. So that lance goes down there now, it goes past that second drain hole. So what you do, you draw it out now in a dry chassis rail so that when you bring the tube back it, stay, it doesn't get mucky. So you're pushing in dry and drawing backwards with the, with the trigger press. So we should see as it passes this drain hole here, we'll see it spray out on the 360 uh, nozzle. So pressing the trigger in case you can hear that um, I've not got my tripod so you just have to trust me that it blasts out of there you'll see it dribbling out anyway soon so there's the tube in I'll slowly pull this out now and drag it out along and it's, uh, it's a fan shape on the end of the nozzle it's a fan spray so it's covering the whole of the, the box section as we draw out so we'll, uh, we'll hit the button now and let's give it some beef, let's give it some beans, let's get that uh, chassis run blitzed. That takes us as far as the fork at the back, which is another larger hole then. I'm going to go up into that on the two Y shapes and then get further up and work, work my way backwards. So I've got as far as the beginning of the fork and I'm coming this way backwards. I've got some... Um, Oh, a turpentine substitute just to wipe down the lance on my hands, it gets a bit grubby. It's not too bad, uh, this stuff. It's quite clean to apply. And you just wipe it off if there's any, if any hits any of the bodywork. It's okay, it just wipes off. You can see we've done the box section. Uh, the sills as well there. They're clear, I've checked them. So, okay, uh, let's just pull that through now. See you in a sec. Mahooch's best brew on the go. Some hot dinner troll topping up the the Sealy gun now, another litre to go in. If you want to heat your uh, dinner salt up like this, just keep it supervised. I've got my own the infrared, but just keep your eye on things. Don't leave it like I did, so the top melts. Whoops. Just built an extender with this uh, poly tube. I got myself some, uh, what we got here, polythene tubing. Just happened to have that lying around. And that's uh, made me a little extender piece just to go on this run under there I want to be heading out towards the back come out where the back bumper irons are so we're going in with some inspection holes under here and we're feeding up blankets down to catch any drips and we're away to go right I'm just going in on this back fork it looks like I think I can get to there 
so that can take me to there and then I can get the rest by coming up through these bracket holes here and get down so looks like I can cover the entire fork section hoping for you guys yeah it feels like that's the max just trying to see what I can get out of it Let's see how much that gives us that gives us yeah it's going to that bracket there see where it's it's dribbled out don't worry that wasn't uh, any wax oil coming out actually that was me thinking it was a hole and it wasn't it's actually blocked off because the bolt runs through that seal so anyway try again looks like I'm hitting an obstruction there most likely be that bolt thing there so we'll go for that for now so hitting the button and we're going for it see you in a sec right, this one goes further so hit that Well, that's coming out. I think that's inside the car. Shit. And that's what you're looking for. Just make sure you hit all the holes, you'll see it coming out so you know you've hit the targets. So that's that chassis leg done, that chassis fork. I'm going to go from the back bumper lines now inwards. Away we go. And there she goes, clean. That was a clean operation. Let's get some cloth. That was clean. Just a little bit at the end. I said serps to clean it up. Now, okay, here we are at the back of the car. Now let's get that torch in. It's fresh out of the the wand, and you can see now you're going to get a great view, a world first of what current coverage we can get with this wand and the dinner trail with the heat. That looks to me like a full 360 hit. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see it because I'm just trying to do the torch for you. How about that? Oh, it's keeping locked on. Just trying to find the optimal place for the light for you. Looks like it's got everywhere that was just one pass so let's do the other side now and follow our way down and meet the other chassis leg let's get right down there and see how we've got okay hope you're enjoying this wax rolling section we're keeping on going just keeping the car rolling we've got targets to meet we've got to keep moving see you in a sec hope you like that this is what we could do a before and after so this is the the offside Okay, so you can see what the coverage is there, nothing. I'll just get a still shot, hold on, we'll cut back to it. Interestingly enough, it's like that zinc guy. It's got a lot of paint in there. Not as bad as I thought. He's been, I know he put the nozzles in and tried to inject the chassis with the zinc paint. But I was never sure if it, it penetrated or not, but it's not bare metal in there, that's for sure. Looking quite good in there. Right, let's put the wax in, let's get it down. See you in a sec. Hit it. Okay, I've got to use both hands. Sorry about that, but get you some clips. Live action. I'm going to go back and wobble it backwards forward, just doing this for you. I'll go back and be wobbling the wand in and out because it's blocking some of the nozzles. If you know what I mean, I'm not centralised, so...
crazy you can see how it does that hope you enjoyed that one that's a good little clip just working on some jack item bits and spare wheel spare wheel retaining bolt there and this is the spare wheel retaining ring uh, sort of top bracket holds the wheel down I'm putting some double sided some evo stick contact adhesive on there got two felt pads here contact adhesive on them so we're going to making a felt facing so when it drops into the top of the wheel and you're tying it up it's a nice cushioned effect and it's not metal onto the front of the wheel that could scratch the front of your your rim so uh, two felt pads going on there with contact adhesive uh, that'll just a little touch just to give it a little bit of detail and protection so I'll, I'll glue that up now we'll see what it looks like in the wheel all right so there's the contact adhesive grabbing nicely the felt pads that gives us a nice soft touch for our wheel retainer here's our wheel that fits in there and a nice felt face to grip the wheel no scratching you lovely rust styles and here's our galvanized bolt to go on here's our galv bolt so we drop that in let's pop this in the well to see how she looks we'll bolt it down just a little touch of grease why not the end of the bolt there couldn't help it to keep everything nice you know so down we go into the uh, slot not the easiest of compared to the later type but you do get it a little bit fiddlier than the uh, the mod of the what they call a facelift one or the the later type anyway so we're in there now I'll nip that up with the spanner and that shows you how you you lock your super duper wheel in first time 27 years when he's had his wheel fitted into the boot and we're nipping up nice there because I've modified my wheel brace I'm gonna have to have an adapter to undo this bolt because it's set for the same wheel nuts as standard wheel nuts so as opposed to the, uh, the wheel nuts I've got on mine just in case I do come across any other type of wheel nuts that are smaller bolt heads I'm keeping the options open with both braces and I'm gonna have this powder coated as well so I've got both braces and there we go we're in that's how the wheel locks down lovely stuff